It's quite a while ago that I drove the new Mercedes GLE. For me, one of the most beautiful and drivable cars in its segment. Now, Mercedes is showing up with the new, more sporty version, the Mercedes GLE Coupe. And in this winter wonderland, I choose the actual top version, the AMG GLE 53 Coupe for my test drive today. And I'm gonna find out how it drives, what else it delivers, and what makes that car a real AMG. The front of the now 2 meter one wide GLE Coupe is dominated by the large grille and the lower side air intakes. The power domes on the bonnet provide additional power. Always on board are the so-called multi-beam LED headlights, including ultra-range high beam with 84 individual controllable LEDs per headlight. Always on board with the GLE Coupe is the widescreen display here in front of me, which means you have twice 12.3 inch as yeah, combined under one piece of glass as one monitor then. And this really gives you all the information you want and very nicely displayed. On top of this, always on board as well is MBUX, so the new Mercedes infotainment system, including the new voice control, where you can just talk to your car and will react the way you really expecting it. But another highlight, unfortunately an option, is the new head-up display, because the size of the projection is about twice the size of the predecessor's one, and that means we're talking about 45, to 15 centimeters, which means it looks like you're having another widescreen in front of you, directly in front of your window. At 4 meters 94, the new GLE Coupe is around 4 centimeters longer than its predecessor. The Coupe also gained around 2 centimeters in the wheelbase, but remains 6 centimeters below the figure of the normal GLE. In its basic configuration, the SUV Coupe drives on 19 inch wheels. 20 inch are standard on the AMG. If you want more, you can order alloy wheels up to 22 inches from an additional charge of around 3,500 euros here in Germany. The front window of the GLE Coupe is flatter and so together with a sloping roofline ensures a dynamic look. Also important are the small windows and the very high shoulder line. Typical Coupe. The GLE Coupe is really a completely different car regarding to the drive when you talk about the GLE Coupe and the GLE because six centimeters less in wheelbase really makes a complete difference. The car is a lot more agile, it's real fun to drive and especially in the AMG version, you do have the drive modes which support you when you want to be a bit more sporty and if you then choose Sport Plus or Sport, the, the car really delivers what you expect from an AMG. The rear looks extremely sporty thanks to the broad shoulders and the curved trunk line. This is supported by the very thin split tail lights in LED technology and the large chrome exhaust trims. When you drive a Mercedes AMG, you don't have to think about quality of materials and craftsmanship. And the GLE Coupe is not different. So the things you find in here are soft touch materials, wood, leather, very nice surfaces, so everything that makes the car look and feel absolutely perfect. On top of this, you do find very comfortable seats and with the AMG version, these are sports seats and they really do not only deliver comfort, they also deliver more than enough support, even if you drive the car like you want to drive an AMG. When the GLE Coupe hits the market, there will be two diesel engines available with the 350D and the 400D and they offer either 272 or 330 horsepower. On top of this, in summer 2020, there will be a plug-in hybrid available, which then offers a system power out of a diesel engine and an electric motor of um, 320 horsepower. And I think more important, a pure electric range of more than 100 kilometers. On top of this, for all the performance guys, you will find the AMG 53 at the moment, which now offers 435 horsepower, but there will be a 63 as well. I don't have the date, but it will come. Important with the GLE Coupe is all the cars at the moment offer um, an automatic gearbox and all the cars are formatic cars, which means you have all-wheel drive always on board. Vehicles like the GLE Coupe are never a bargain. The basic version of the 272 horsepower GLE Coupe 350D formatic costs from 76,279 euros onwards in Germany. But the competitors are not cheap either. A Porsche Cayenne Coupe costs from around 83,000 euros and a BMW X6 from about 75,500 euros. 
The Porsche Coupe starts with a 340 horsepower 3 liter 6 cylinder petrol engine. The BMW also features 3 liters and 6 cylinders, but here a diesel delivers 265 horsepower. The AMG I'm driving is featuring a 3 liter 6 cylinder inline engine, and that delivers 435 horsepower, 520 newton meters of maximum torque, and it is combined always with a 9 speed. Um, automatic AMG gearbox and this package really works absolutely well and when you do a kick down in that car it really changes into a beast the acceleration is massive and you do not feel like driving a big SUV it's really very nice and so you really have the opportunity to say okay I just want to drive comfortably easy just enjoying the countryside or you can say yes I want the sportiness of an AMG and both will be delivered and this is the same with the drive mode so you do have extra drive modes in the car like sand like slippery gowns and all that stuff but you do have the standard three let's say it's comfort sport and sport plus and when you choose in between those the whole car really completely changes so you can really say yes I want to just want comfortably drive just easy with my family or I want to have it a lot more sporty if it is the time to do that. Looking at the shape of the GLE Coupe, you may think the boot size cannot be good, but when you look into it, you find with the rear seats up a maximum capacity of 655 liters. This is, by the way, 25 more than the standard GLE offers, and this is only because the boot is longer. But when you fold down the rear bench, the picture completely changes because then the car only features 1,790 liters of capacity, and this is, to be honest, about 250 less than the standard GLE will provide you with. But there is also plenty of cargo space at the Porsche and the BMW. The BMW X6 offers 580 up to a maximum of 1530 liters of luggage space. The Porsche Cayenne Coupe performs slightly better with 622 up to 1540 liters. The price you're paying when you drive an AMG is you will use more petrol than with a standard diesel engine. So AMG says that our car should take 9.3 litre per 100 kilometre driven. To be really honest, we're driving through the countryside, but inside of the mountains, it's cold outside. And the figure I have in my car is a bit more like, let's say, above 15. But you really have to be fair. We're climbing the hills, we're driving down, we stop, start, turn over. So this is not a standard figure. But I think if you drive the car, you should drive the car, you should expect something above 10. Of course, the GLE Coupe features the most important driver assistant and safety system as standard. And on top, you can choose out of a whole variety of different systems, which make your car on one hand more safety, on the other hand, more comfortable. And because that is so long, let's have a look yourself. I will just present you what is standard and what comes as an option. Of course, you will find not only the new GLE Coupe, which is a lot more sporty than the standard GLE, you will find the AMG version as well. And I'm very interested to see what really makes the AMG an AMG. And this is why I now talk to Stefan Novak. He is the head of the project with that car. Stefan, I have just a question. Um, a GLE Coupe is a very nice and sporty car, but AMG is always a, a different, completely different world. So what did you do to the car to make it not only look, but to make it drive like an AMG? The most obvious is uh, for sure the AMG grille, which now is uh, on all AMG models and it uh, gets the car immediately in the AMG family. Um, we do have the AMG bumpers that have, uh, additionally have the flicks here uh, that funnel the air uh, alongside the car. We have the AMG uh, um, wheel arch claddings and the side skills. So basically you have a, a, a very uh, individual look of the car. And for sure on the rear you have the, um, the rear bumper with the two uh, double round uh, exhaust and pipes. Interior design. So is there anything different? Like you just said, we have uh, different drive programs. Uh, and what about the look of the car? Are there, are there any th other things I can adjust? Well, for sure, you basically, uh, the car welcomes you in a really uh, the AMG world. So you have the AMG seats, you have the AMG sports uh, steering wheel uh, with uh, the, the shifter knobs uh, optionally. You have uh, the uh, metal plated uh, pedals so uh, it really uh, the moment you enter the car you recognize that's something special when we talk about the technology so we talk about 
let's say, engines. What is under the hood to make that car a real AMG? And that's a, the great inline six-cylinder engine with an output of uh, 320 kilowatts or 435 horsepower. Um, and it has 520 newton meters of torque, plus okay. the uh, ISG that uh, adds especially in the start. It's a twin turbo, but it's a specific, you have the regular turbo and then you have an electric uh, compressor that uh, adds to additional uh, compression is, uh, from immediately after the start. Um, in addition, this engine has uh, a starter alternator that gives a natural uh, 22 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. So um, from the very beginning, the car has a very good response and uh, it's really a great engine. Um, when we talk about suspension, I think there are some differences uh, between this one and the standard one, especially when it comes to the so-called e-body control, which the, that car doesn't feature. The suspension is developed completely new for this car. It's an air suspension and what makes that car special is uh, the series has uh, a cradle that is attached to the body uh, with rubber mounts. Uh, we attached it fixed. In addition, we distanced the attachment point of the lower control arms uh, by 20 millimeters and by that we achieve a different center of roll. That makes gives the car a much more car-like handling. and. Um, we um, uh, have, in addition, the, the active uh, stabilizer bar. So the stabilizer bar that really can twist and give force to the wheel and really uh, give the car a very precise, very agile handling. The car has a, a, torque, um, a transfer case that uh, can distribute the force between the rear and the front axle. So this really gives the car uh, and gives us the option to uh, have depending on different drive programs, uh, a different torque split. And for sure, it, um, it splits the, way, the, the torque in a way uh, that you have maximum torque on the wheels, but also gives you a more agile handling uh, the more you go from, from comfort to a sport uh, driving program. The GLE Coupe really offers loads of space here for the driver and the co-driver. And there is yeah, no difference you can feel if you compare it to the standard GLE. So even me as a tall person, I really do sit very comfortably here. I have more than enough space and I do also have enough headroom. But how does it look in that kind of a coupe behind me? Let's find out while having a short stop. So the promised short stop to see if I can sit behind me. My seat position not changed. So let's climb in to the coupe. Now that works. And as you can see, uh, I always sit very upright as a driver, so I do have more than enough space in front of my knees. I do have not so much space left for my foot, but, but the thing is, I really use to sit quite down to the ground because I'm quite tall. And when I sit really upright here, yes, I will touch the ceiling, but still, I'm nine, 1 meter 95 behind 1 meter 95, and that's for a coupe, not bad. If you drive an AMG, you do expect the typical AMG sound from the exhaust. This piece of brutalness of yeah power and uh, with the new GLE coupe this is unfortunately a bit different and the reason for that is that it's not that AMG says we decided not to do it anymore or that they said we can't deliver because of the um, of the the kind we we built the exhaust system no it is only a legal thing so they're not allowed to do this anymore and this really is a pity that was my test drive with the new Mercedes AMG GLE 53 Coupe. What I really found very surprisingly is that you not only as a driver and co-driver sit very comfortably in the car, you also will find more than enough space at the second seat row, even for a tall person like me. Another thing which is really surprising is the boot size. It is bigger with the rear seats up than with the normal GLE, but this is because the car is a bit longer. Then the other very nice thing is the car is a lot more agile than the standard GLE. One reason for that, of course, is the shorter wheelbase. We're talking about six centimeters. But of course, you have to complain when you do a review. And this car, the complaint point will be the price because the sticker price for the base model 350D is about 76,000 euros in Germany. If you want that car, the 53, that'll cost you a bit less than 93,000 euros. And we're still talking about the base equipped car. But on the other hand, it's pure fun of driving. It's a really nice car to look at. And if you want to drive that car with a star on your bonnet, you may have to just pay the price.